Okay, let's get into the number one. So here we're going to go through. One. This is all of you guys who submitted lists. These are your favorite comic book films of all time. So here we go. Ashley Pauls has Iron Man. Mm. Michael Gordon and Zach Linton both have The Dark Knight. Ben Coberly has X-Men. Malachi Ward, Road to Perdition. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cody, Guardians of the Galaxy. Matt Kressel, The Dark Knight. Eddie and John both have The Avengers. Bobby Nash, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Nate LeBate, Guardians of the Galaxy. David Graham, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Kate Acera has Superman Returns. Whoa. Now, so Kate and I talked about this one a little bit before we recorded the podcast. Okay. Because I think she was a little nervous to put Superman Returns on as a number one because a lot of people hate on it. Yeah. I love Superman Returns. And... I know there's reasons to hate it. I know Superman never throws a punch. I know the relationship between Superman and Lois is a little weird. Mm. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor. Mm. But based on nostalgia alone, that movie made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just to go into a theater and have that Richard Donner Superman vibe again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I loved it. What do you, how do you guys feel about that one? I think it was in that one that they used the John Williams theme at the end. Like yeah. when you're flying through planets and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And Actually, they use not... it right at the beginning and do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just love that music. Yeah. I, so I, there were some lines in that movie that literally made me cringe. Yeah. Um, well, and sure. so that, <laughs> that was weird. I don't do that very often. Um, I love Brian Singer as a director. Um, he did great with How's uh, the show. But yeah. I was pretty indifferent to that movie. What did you think? Pretty similar feeling. Um, I did not hate on it the way that people were hating on it. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there's a thing that happens in geek culture. I think we are seeing it happen with the Inhumans. <laughs> where <laughs> it's almost like, let's all decide to hate something. Yeah. And then it's just fun to do that for some reason. And it's unfair to the actual work. It's not it's not being fair to the work. It's it's because of some other reason. Like, oh you shouldn't have done this or Superman shouldn't have had that color or whatever. And they're like, like let's just hate on it because of that. And I just feel like that's ridiculous. So I don't yeah. hate it. But at the same time I, it doesn't make me want to put it on the top ten. Yeah. So. And that's why I'm excited about our new one of our new formats for the episodes. The episode where we do rankings and we put things against each other and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Because there's a lot of shows out there that do that. But they do it to arrive at sort of an absolute answer. Right. So, and we're not going to do that. We're not going to be seeking to arrive at an absolute answer. We're going to seek to make it okay to have opinions and That's ask right. questions and be different. Because I agree. I think the fan community can be very, very critical. Yeah. And they have these idealized versions of these characters in their heads. Right. And if it doesn't match up with this super specific thing that's in their head, right. it's just not good enough. Yeah. And that's not fair. And you that should, takes away the enjoyment. You should be allowed, Kate, to love Superman. Exactly. Parents. And we, Daryl and I make fun of each other all the time about like, oh, you like that film? That's dumb. Um, but the reality <laughs> is, I'm glad he likes that film, right? And I'm glad he defends that film. And I think that that's... Are you, you thinking of Lady in the Water right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. But that's a, that's a side topic. Yeah. We brought up Lady in the Water. Justin's like, I'm, what's I'm going on? Now. This is a long-running thing between Jay and I. I like Lady in the Water. So, okay, so Justin likes it too. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I'm not the one that is hating on Lady in the Water. That's I just true. It wasn't you. It was someone else that was hating on Daryl. And I said, that's really funny because I've heard Lady in the Water sucks. Daryl said, you should watch Lady in the Water. I started to watch it and went, ah, this movie's not for me. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't hate on it. I just said... Uh, and to be fair, so what he's talking about is our former co-workers, of which Nate LeBate is one, and then there was also Brad Kennedy, and the four of us... Not to name names, but... Not Brad to name names, but we're naming names. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he probably doesn't listen to this, so that's okay. I'm sure he does not. <laughs> Those geeks. Um, but that was just how we worked. Whenever one of us liked something that the other three didn't, it's it true. was just a dog pile. That's just the way it works. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, where did we leave off here? Okay. Asa has uh, The Dark Knight at number two. Mm -hmm. Anthony Holdier has The Avengers. Tim Posada has The Dark Knight. Um, Elvis and Sandra both have Watchmen. Caleb Linden has wow. Guardians of the Galaxy. Elvis and Sandra. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Mike Rinaldi has Batman, uh, the Keaton film. Here we go. Jim Baldwin has 
the 1966 Batman film as his number one favorite comic book movie of all time. Hey, man, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> Leo Partible has Superman the movie. Chris Hainers is really interesting. This has popped up nowhere else. Mm. And I think when we saw this, we were like, oh, yeah. But it's Dick Tracy. Yes. That's a fantastic choice. I don't know if it's actually based, it's based on a, more of a comic strip as well, opposed to Well, there were comic, comic books, books too. Were there? I mean, there okay. was both. No, that's, that's great. That's a great movie. No it's question. a totally fun movie. It's like yeah. super over-the-top stylized comic book film. I, yeah. I was in a play written in the Dick Tracy world. Yeah, so yeah. Dick Tracy has a special place in my heart. And we actually finally have talking watches now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your iPhone. <laughs> so, man, it comes full circle. That's true. All right. Uh, Hannibal Taboo, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Yes. Michael Young, Marvel's The Avengers. And Isaac Johnson, The Dark Knight. So, here we go, guys. Our number ones. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember who I started with last time. So, Justin, we'll just go with you. What's your number one comic book film of all time? Eddie, John, and Anthony said it. And then Michael actually used the nomenclature. <laughs> Marvel's <laughs> Avengers. Other people did, too. I just oh, didn't read it okay. until now. Uh, Marvel's Avengers. I am just a huge fan of Joss Whedon. I think that guy can write. I think he can handle an ensemble cast differently than almost any other director. Um, it has some iconic shots. It has a great Avengers theme. It handles a lot of different story arcs that all kind of get their day in the sun. Um, and it is the end of a project that Marvel did for, you know, f longer than five years, but since Iron Man was released in 2008 until Avengers was released in 2012, putting out all those individual movies and then bringing them together, no one had done that. It was yeah. so cool. And it was exactly the movie I wanted it to be. Um, <coughs> Hulk uh, flinging Loki around, uh, smashing him against the floor. <laughs> still just one of, the, one of my favorite cinematic moments ever. Um, I love that movie. Yeah. It's, I think it is the epitome of a blockbuster film. Uh, and I would even use, if you're going to make a differentiation, which I don't know if you should, but if you're going to make a differentiation between film and movies, right, mm. I, do, I think like it doesn't almost qualify as a film, but it's a fantastic movie, yeah. which is why I'm sort of more of a film person, so like the, a lot of the movies didn't make my top ten, but you can't, it is a blockbuster, it is a movie, if you have popcorn, that's what you want to watch, right, like <laughs> it's amazing, so yeah. I almost felt like that was really encouraging, but also sort of a veiled insult. Like, you're hitting him with snobbery. No, it totally makes sense to me, because I feel like my top ten list goes back and forth between films yeah, and movies. It does. Yeah, Yeah, you, you, exactly. You're going back and forth, and I think that there's room for that. I just think that it's it's kind of like a personal preference, right? Like, do you, do you use movies, and I think what you're saying is, I use movies to escape, but I also use movies to, to give me a really compelling story to understand the world yeah. differently. Yeah. And I tend to gravitate towards that side almost exclusively, um, except for areas like The Rocketeer, which is a great movie, yeah. right? So, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah, Marvel's Avengers did not make me think differently about the world. It didn't, right. it didn't exactly. give me any, like, weighty <laughs> conversation to have. It right. just put a big smile on my face the whole time, and yeah, exactly. it's back when I talk about it. Oh, uh, it's yeah. so much fun. It's yeah. a great, great movie. And it was a super huge... I can't talk. It was a huge achievement yeah. for when it came yeah, out. Yeah, it's true. No doubt. Jay, what's your number one? I mean, it's your number one as well. Like, How do you know? <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dark Knight. Of course, Dark Knight's my favorite. Favorite, favorite, favorite comic book movie. I honestly thought you were going to go with Guardians. No, Guardians is, is number three. It's very impactful to me, but I think the Dark Knight, I think when you talk about a film, like I think that Christopher Nolan basically said, look, I'm going to make films. I'm going to make films that you could make without superheroes. And they would be amazing films without superheroes. But I'm going to make them about superheroes. Yeah. And the way that he handles it, and the way that we see his version of the Joker being chaos and Batman struggling to bring order and justice to Gotham and contrasting that with the chaotic nature of the Joker is just a fantastic worldview clash that I think... It forces both characters to wrestle with it. 
because the Joker, I think, is sitting there going, like, I tried order, and order didn't work, mm. and I have to prove it to you, Batman. I have to prove it to you that order is a worth, a worthless pursuit. And then Batman has to struggle with that the whole time through, and I just think that's fantastic. Uh, and, and the Heath Ledger portrayal. Yeah. Mind-blowing. And then, who is his DP? Wally Pfister? Wally Pfister. Uh-huh. My goodness. Yeah. Beautiful images throughout the entire Absolutely. movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue yet. It, <laughs> it yeah. is my number one film. Well, it's my number one film of all time, let alone comic book films. But it's That's my right. absolute favorite movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... I think it's my number three of all time. Behind Raiders and... Behind Raiders and behind Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back, okay. Ooh. Lord of the Rings would be He's, above he's got it, a Harrison yeah. Ford thing. He, he loves him some Harrison Ford. I guess I do, yeah. Yeah. Although he's terrible in interviews. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like your, he's like your grumpy grandpa. Is yeah. What Harrison Ford is. He's, an, he's a fascinating guy because he, I saw him in an interview where he was saying, I don't know why people would want to know me as a person. Yeah, like, yeah it's I, just I, a job I, to him. Yeah, he just goes I'm just going to work gonna and does his job. go be this character, and that's far more interesting than me as a person. I'm like, oh, that's such a sad thing yeah. to think about stuff. Yeah. Totally. That's so true. But going back to The Dark Knight, I mean, there's just so much that I love about it. I think it's a flawless movie. Mm-hmm. I think it... There's no wasted dialogue in the whole movie. Like, it's None. super tight. I've actually tried to watch it in that setting to yeah. see if there was any wasted dialogue. I can, I have not found a single line of dialogue that's yeah. not wasted. Um, and the Joker is one of my favorite characters of all time. Specifically from this movie is one of my favorite characters of all time. Right. Partially because Chris Nolan totally shuns the need for an origin story in favor of making this a more interesting character. And not only does he shun it, he kind of makes fun of it. Because the <laughs> yeah. Joker, on two separate occasions, says, do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> and it's two different stories. Right. Like, right. it's probably all, it's all crap. It's, none of it's true, right. you know? And it's just so interesting. And it looks so beautiful. It's dark, but gorgeous. And I think it's a perfect balance between this sort of realistic Batman that, that Nolan was going for. But it's also still fun and exciting and big, and I just I could talk about it all day. It's just I know, it's, it's awesome. the best movie, and we that did was ever talk made. about it for a really long we time. Really, we really did. Our podcast, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take a look now to finish this off at what overall what all of our submitters voted for as the overall best film. So this is all quantified. We assigned a point system. It takes a really long time to do, but it's worth it. <laughs> I know. I was um, so glad when you said you would do it. I'm like, I know. Oh, thank you. It's a lot of work. It's so much work. So what do you guys want? Do you want top 10? Do you want top five? What do you think? Let's do the top 10, but do the, the, the bottom five of the top 10 quickly. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So number 10 is uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. All right. Number nine is Batman, the Tim Burton film. Okay. Uh, eight is Watchmen. All right. Seven is Iron Man. All right. And six is Wonder Woman. Wow, Wonder Woman didn't break the top five, Yeah, huh? so that's ten through bummer. six. So top five, coming in at number five, is Superman the movie. The 78 film with Christopher Reeve. All right. I'm on board with that. Love that movie. It's iconic, it's classic, it's hard it to argue with it. It's, it's a, one of the original, I think I was, we were talking about it on the way over, and it's kind of like, it's one of the original things that made superhero movies a viable thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four is Captain America the Winter Soldier. Again, we don't have to talk about any of these, really, because we've already, we've already talked, talked about, about them at length. <laughs> um, number three, The Avengers. Right on. Number two, Guardians of the Galaxy. And, sorry, Justin, everybody seems to agree with us that... I don't number disagree. Number one is The Dark Knight. <laughs> was The Dark Knight on your top ten? Yeah, it was number, number two. two. It was number two. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that. So, yeah, this is top two. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. That was fun. So there you have it. 